All right, so today I'm gonna to be showing you guys some Steam Deck essentials. So let's get started. Now in this video, I'm actually gonna be showing you a bunch of quality of life updates, as well as some apps and plugins that you guys should be checking out. First off, we have something called the Decky Loader. Now, if you're not familiar with this, I will highly recommend checking it out. It's this little plugin right on the bottom, right over here, where it'll actually allow you to install plugins to make your Steam Deck a little bit better. Now they do have a marketplace and there are apps that I didn't install because I didn't find the need. A lot of people install actually Animation Changer as well as Power Tools. I don't actually mind the default animation as well as the Power Tools. I think I actually used that once, maybe twice and I've never touched it again. So while those are very powerful utilities and plugins, here are the few that I would recommend checking out. Now, first we have Steam Grid DB. Now, if you are the type to actually install games from DOSBox or any other locations, I would highly recommend getting Steam Grid DB. What that allows you to do is basically if I right click on this, I could actually change the artwork right over here to something that I want. So I'm playing this game called Tyrion 2000 and it doesn't come with artwork because it's from DOSBox. So I am actually able to actually change all the images that I want from Steam Grid DB. Again, this is more of a quality of life issue. So if they don't have the game that you are looking for, or if you don't want to change the images, it'll usually just come out like this. Right down here, it'll just be like this little pill right over here where it doesn't have any images. But yeah, Steam Grid DB is definitely a very useful utility to add all these images back into games that you actually are installing from a different location. Second we have is Storage Cleaner. Now I highly recommend this. Now I recently just got an update for my game Wukong and after every update this has to rebuild shaders. What happens to the old shaders? Well it doesn't get deleted. It just stays where it's supposed to. So you're actually losing a lot of storage. So by using Storage Cleaner, it'll actually look for all the shader cache and a bunch of other stuff. Especially when you uninstall a game, a lot of the files don't get deleted, like the shaders and all the other stuff. So this will find all those missing components and allow you to delete them. So here we have like Flight Simulator. I have shaders in here that got updated. Two gigs is just sitting there doing nothing. Black Myth Wukong, another two gigs of shaders that just got recompiled. I have Turbo Overkill. When you update a game, the old shaders literally just sit there or old files. So highly recommend getting storage cleaner so you can actually empty out like for me, it's 10 gigs of space that I could empty out just by running this program already. Moving on, we have something called Cheat Deck. This is very particular because I'm actually having a lot of trouble playing Wukong and there's no difficulty settings in this game. So I actually have cheats enabled on Black Myth Wukong. So how this works is if I right click on here, I go into Cheat Deck and actually enable the trainer or the Wukong trainer to allow me to play cheats. Now what the program does or Cheat Deck does, it basically allows you to run two programs at the same time. So if I play Black Myth Wukong right now and I hit play, it'll actually run the trainer first and then run the application in the back. So you can see it flickers a little. Right now it's gonna run the trainer. Here we go, that's the trainer initializing. And then give this a couple of seconds, the game will start running in the background. I'm just gonna jump into a character right now. All right, so here we go. So if I was to walk around and I charge my staff, my stamina is gonna deplete. So I'm charging my staff now and you can see my stamina depleting on the bottom left where the yellow part is. And there you go. Now, if I was to go into Steam, switch it over to my trainer right over here, I can now enable cheats like infinite health and infinite stamina. And then I can swap back to the game itself. And now if I do the same thing, say like I hold my staff, now my stamina doesn't deplete. And I'm charging and charging and charging and it's still full. So, in this game, I find that I actually really need help because I just don't have the reaction time to dodge all the stuff. Just trying to kill this one boss that's right up here. It took me five days and I still didn't beat him yet. This little bear that I'm about to fight. Let me see if I get to there soon. So this guy right over here, five days, I still haven't beat him. But now since I have infinite health and infinite uh, mana, which is definitely a cheat, I shouldn't have a problem beating him and continue the game as I want. Realistically, I just want to beat this game now. Now I could just quit the game. So I'm just going to exit game or go into menu to exit. And there we have it. We're back out into a Steam Deck and that's how you enable Cheat Deck. Now moving on, we have the next one called CSS Loader. 
Now CSS Loader allows you to change the appearance of how Steam Deck looks. So right now I do have something called round in effect. So you see how these little icons are rounded over here. And if you look into these, these are all rounded. And if I go into my library right now, they're all rounded as well up on the corners. That's what that effect does. Now the CSS loader also changes other stuff like better download page. Or if you go down to their marketplace, you could see a bunch of other plugins that you could download to see what you like. Like volume bars could change, everything could change. So it's not just set to see what your desktop looks like, but it could change appearances for other stuff as well. So if you're interested in making your Steam Deck look slightly different or better than the way you want to, a CSS loader is uh, definitely right up your alley. Moving on, we have how long to beat for the deck. Now, honestly, I actually find this to be pretty essential. It actually tells me how long it will take me to beat this game. Like this one is 35 hours. Main and extras will be 45.9. And if I want to be completionist, like complete everything will be 63.8 hours. I'm 12 hours into the game. So I'm nowhere near the main story to finish at this time. Same thing with like other games, like say Raptor. This would take 4.2 hours to beat seven hours for the main and extras and 11 hours to complete everything. So I really do like that it gives me that information. And if I wanted to click on view detail, it'll bring me to the website of where they got all this information as well. So those are my main plugins that I would use for Deki. There are a few, like I said, that are in here that I might recommend, which is power tools or animation. But to me, it doesn't bring me any other joy because I don't really use those programs. But ultimately those are it. So if you are checking it out, I would highly recommend Deki and a few of these plugins. Now, next up, we have something called DOSBox. Now, I spent a lot of time playing DOS games itself. So if I was to play, say, Raptor, this will load right into DOSBox, load right into my game. And each game is very particular because not all games stick with WASD as the default. So you're always gonna have to play around with your controllers to see which one suits you best. Raptor is actually one of my favorite games back in the day. And I love playing this game. This is such a good game. So I'm gonna load this. I could fly a mission autopilot i do have the triggers right over here so to shoot is the top right over here i have this all set up to shoot all this other stuff such an amazing game and then i between this game and Tyrion 2000 they're both really good because they're all uh, top down shooters and if you're into retro top down shooters are probably like one of my favorite type of games but i'm not gonna be playing this i'm just showing you guys that it, dosbox works amazing in this i'm gonna abort this mission Actually, I'm just gonna quit, exit the game. Same goes for Tyrion 2000. This game is amazing. Runs right off DOSBox. And again, I own these games off GOG and I had to install it in a particular way for DOSBox to work properly in Steam Deck. But once you have this all set, like I could load this game. Again, I have my controllers all set up this way where I could change my weapon layout, upgrade my stuff, use side buttons, stuff like that. This game's amazing. If you never played it, you get to upgrade your ship. Again, I'm, I'm not here to really talk about the game, but DOSBox works great for stuff like this. Again, I'm gonna quit this because we don't need to see that, but it works amazing. Now, if you're more modern and you wanna play games like Descent, Descent is amazing on this. Especially when I was younger, we weren't able to afford any like game pads or joysticks. So playing this game in this type of setting is actually pretty impressive. Unfortunately, Joystick mapping for DOSBox is not always the best, so you have to like figure out what you need to do to get everything properly working. So I'm just gonna play a new game, Trainee, and here we go. We have this over here. We could shoot back and forth, side scraping, sidestepping, and I could shoot stuff over here. It's a little hard because I'm trying to play at a weird angle, but this game is actually very impressive for its time when you are trying to find some space shooters. But yeah, this is actually a really fun game. Descent 1, Descent 2. I actually never beat it because we actually... It, this game became too hard to a point where I don't even know. Like we just played a little bit of it. It's an amazing game, but never had I ever beat this game. But yeah, the back triggers will actually lift that, like lift the ship up. So without those, it makes it a little bit harder. I can fire some missiles over here. Descent 2 is a little bit better because you got more weapons, but you get the idea. DOSBox is definitely a must have if you are playing older style games. Now the next big thing I'm gonna show you guys is something called Emulation Station. 
Now, Emulation Station allows you to play all Super Nintendo, Nintendo DS, PSP, PS2, Dreamcast, a bunch of other systems. So I don't have much games in here, but we are gonna test out a PSP game called Lumens. I actually own this game. And if you guys are into any type of emulation and you wanna play old school games like Final Fantasy or something like that, you can install Emulation Station to achieve this type of game. To me, Lumens is actually a pretty tough game because I'm not used to seeing blocks like this, but it is a pretty fun game. But yeah, it works really well, especially on a screen like this, because it actually reminds me of how a PSP is like ultra wide. So it works out very well in this particular setup. So yeah, the PSP or PlayStation or Super Nintendo, whatever you want, Emulation Station is where you want to get just to get all those games to work if you are in the mood to play some old retro games. Now, I am going to quit this because I'm not going to be playing that, but you get the idea. Emulation Station is definitely on the top of your list if you're planning to play some retro console games. Moving on, we have Heroic Game Launcher. Now, I have a couple of games here. Actually, this game, Kaiujin. I don't know, Kaijenny. Uh, this is from um, Epic Game Store and SnowRunner. I purchased this from Epic Game Store before it was even on Steam. So in order to get this to work on Steam properly, like you will need something like Heroic Game Launcher. So I'm going to open Heroic Game Launcher and it'll actually show you all the games that I have for whatever stores I own, which is GOG or Epic Games or Amazon Prime. So if you guys are looking for any games installed that is not from Steam, you can install it through Heroic Game Launcher. It's actually pretty amazing. There's a bunch of stuff that you could do from here. Especially like I have some, say like Epic Games that were installed, okay? So say like actually GOG. I have a GOG game that's, that I installed called Slipways. And if I want to modify some of the settings, I can go into here and change the wine version, change where I want to save, and change a bunch of other stuff. So you can customize it. So say if I want Slipways to be in the Steam Deck menu, I could go over to the three little dots over here and add to Steam. Once I do that, this game will now be on Steam so I don't actually have to open Heroic Game Launcher. Now I could quit this right now. And if I head back out to this area, well, it didn't upload, update yet, but that game will show up here. So say like SnowRunner, again, this is one of the games that was on Heroic Game Launcher. I just click on this. It'll tell me how many hours to play the main story. Wow, this is a 90 hour game. Didn't even notice that. I get play. It's gonna run everything off in the background, go through Epic and all the other stuff and run the game. So Heroic Game Launcher is a must have if you have own other games from somewhere else. Especially from those three locations, GOG, Epic, or Prime. All right, last but not least, you can see that SnowRunner is definitely running and it's running off my Epic account. And I do have some DLCs on with this. That's why I wanted to get this working with the Epic account. But I'm gonna exit this. But yeah, definitely, if you have games in other locations, I would highly recommend installing Heroic Game Launcher to get everything working. Last but not least, we have something called Lutris. Now, it's not actually on here itself, but I do install games through Lutris because there are games in that like weird criteria where it's like Windows, but it's not. So like games that run off Windows XP, but couldn't get the resolution right and all this other stuff. Something like SimCity 3000 that I actually own off GOG needs particular care and you can't just install it through Heroic Game Launcher, even though I have it through Heroic Game Launcher. It's because you need the resolution to be weird and stuff like that. So here I'm gonna uh, check out SimCity 3000. And this is actually running off Lutris that has all my patches installed to get the resolution properly working. So that's SimCity 3000. You can see it's like really weird right now. It's got the black borders. But as soon as I go into a new city, actually I'll show you what I'm talking about. Right here, there's like this weird resolution that I had to modify to get this, which is 1280 by 800, which is the resolution of the deck. I'm gonna go into make a new city. Okay, it's gonna generate that. And there you go. This is my new city, except this. And I can move this around like I would, and it's actually full screen now because of the resolution hack and everything that I have in here. But again, this is those type of games that you will actually need Lutris installed just to get this work. So I'm not gonna play this game right now. I'm just gonna close it out, exit game, just to show you guys how that was working. But yeah, so between Lutris, Horror Game Launcher, Emulation Station, Decky Loader, and DOSBox, those are the things I highly recommend. Now checking back into the desktop, I'm gonna show you a little bit more. I'm gonna show you guys, like if I go into Lutris, you can see I actually have other things in here, like Blizzard, Battle.net, if you're gonna install Diablo or any Overwatch, or whatever game that runs off Battle.net, or even if you have Ubisoft Connect, you will need to install that through Lutris itself. You can all download this stuff through the store itself. The Discovery Store actually has Lutris, DOSBox, Hero Game Launcher, so you're not like looking all over the place. The only thing 
that you would actually have to worry about that you're looking for is your Deki Loader and your MU Deck because you can actually install them through GitHub and there's a website that you just click and you get that going. Another thing that I have is here. I have a, a folder called DOS and in here I have a lot of scripts and config files and that's very particular because each one of these actually builds a setting for the DOS games itself because every game has its own key maps, every game has its own resolution, every game has its own uh, RAM settings. It is a little annoying to get all this to work but once you have it working the game works really good. Uh, if you are getting games off GOG, they usually have a DOSBox config right over here. You can see DOSBox config, DOSBox Descent 2 config. They already have all the stuff you need in these files to load the game. So you could just copy and paste. You might have to change some of the resolution stuff like full screen and not full screen. But otherwise, uh, you're pretty much set to go if you are installing stuff from GOG. Anyway, that is it for me, guys. Uh, those are the highly recommended stuff that I would... Uh, suggest taking a look at if you guys have any questions about it or if you guys want any particular standalone install say like DOSBox or Lutris let me know down in the comments below and I can make a video just for that particular installer otherwise all this stuff can be found on the internet if you are interested in looking it up like Deki Loader it, you just go to the GitHub it, I'll give you all the instructions on how to install and uninstall but yeah if you guys have any questions about this hit me up down in the comments below and if you guys are new to this channel consider subscribing and also hitting that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out and that same in our cave hack till it hurts